Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com on Roku, Dwyer Boxing News, for premium picks, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I keep getting emails from people, or YouTube messages, asking me about Tyson Fury versus David Hay. Right, they remember that I once said that I thought Tyson Fury had mental health challenges and that because of those mental health challenges that made him very difficult to bet on. In fact, I said that I would look at Tyson Fury fights as a fan but not as a gambler because I thought the possible mental health issues were that serious. Right, you know, I'm not kidding when I say that. We've seen boxers in the ring with mental health issues. Tyson Fury himself has openly talked about suicidal thoughts and how on some days he feels like he's on top of the world, on other days he feels like he's worthless. Now understand, boxing involves getting hit in the head. We've seen several fighters, quite frankly, get depressed at different times in their careers or after their career is done, right? I believe Ricky Hatton is on record talking about his bouts with depression. We've seen a fighter in a very high profile fight. In fact, it's one of the key fights in his opponent's career and his opponent is a boxing hall of famer or soon will be. Oliver McCall against Lennox Lewis, the rematch. This is after McCall beat Lewis, knocked him out in the first fight. In the rematch, and you need to look at that rematch, Oliver McCall, in my opinion, has a nervous breakdown in the ring. Starts crying, doesn't defend himself, allows himself to get hit. Right? People need to understand. Just like folks have mental health challenges in life, folks have mental health challenges in boxing. Right? Boxing's no different than the rest of the world. A generation ago, Mike Tyson was having big time mood swings. In some interviews, Mike Tyson candidly talks about his own mental health. You can tell in his fight against Michael Spinks that Mike Tyson at that point is on top of the world. Understand, if you are one of these people who, now, I don't know this with Mike Tyson, but if you're bipolar, when you are on top of the world, you are bulletproof. You feel in your heart, no one can beat you. Look at that Tyson Michael Spinks tape. Tyson standing there doesn't even have his hands up. Right, that footage, quite frankly, is some of the best footage of a fighter ever. Tyson's patient. Tyson cuts off the rain. Right, Tyson looks like he's fighting some amateur. When in fact, at the time, Michael Spinks was an unbeaten heavyweight champion. When you're on top of the world, nothing can slow you down emotionally. But when you crash, nothing can pick you up. Look at the Oliver McCall film. When you're lethargic, look at the Mike Tyson Buster Douglas film. Right, You'll notice there's a lack of energy from Tyson from the early rounds, right? When you're feeling down, when you're emotionally flat, you're apathetic. You could be in a heavyweight title fight. There could be 15, 18, 20,000 people watching you and you couldn't care less. You're going through the motions. You're a parody of yourself. Now that brings me to Tyson Fury. 
let me be as clear as I can be. I'm going to disagree strongly with David Hay, who has made statements as only David Hay can. <laughs> David Hay is one of the most charismatic people in boxing. According to David Hay, Tyson Fury's a puppy. In other words, a lot of bark, not a lot of bite. He'll be done by rounds four or five. That's how David Hay sees the fight. Understand that's the mindset of a puncher. David Hay has had multiple fights where he has destroyed opponents like Audley Harrison early. Right? The world, according to David Hay, I'm sure consists of hitting people like Mormack, Jean Ruiz, watching them crumple to the canvas. Monty Barrett, right? So, as far as David Hay is concerned, all he has to do is hit this guy in the head a couple of times. And then, of course, he just has to show up to the post-fight press conference and cash the check uh, to the next battle. Right? I think David Hay is badly mistaken. Skill-wise, if Tyson Fury shows up and he's emotionally prepared, Understand, in my opinion, skill-wise, Tyson Fury is top shelf. I think Tyson Fury can cut off the ring on David Hay. I think Tyson Fury can stop David Hay. Quite frankly, I think Tyson Fury can pursue David Hay in a way that Vladimir Klitschko could not. Let me point out, too, I think Tyson Fury has an inside game. We saw it against Derek Chisora that Vladimir Klitschko does not have. Right? Tyson Fury also has some skills that he doesn't even use in some fights. Right? Tyson Fury's ambidextrous. If he doesn't like the angles when he's fighting you as a righty, he can turn around and fight you as a lefty. Right? In other words, this guy is a student of the game. He's a multilinguist. In my opinion, he's like Andre Ward. In other words, if he needs to jab you from the outside to beat you, think Kevin Johnson, he'll do that. If he needs to come inside and rough you up inside like he did against Derek Chisora, Steve Cunningham, he'll do that. If he needs to throw his weight around and lean on you like he did Steve Cunningham, he'll do that. Right? In other words, this is a guy who, quite frankly, if you've only seen one Tyson Fury fight, you've only seen one part of the diamond. There are other reflections. There are other dimensions. You know, if this guy keeps his head on, he's going to be champion. But let me tell you, a generation ago, we thought that Mike Tyson was going to rule the rules for at least 10 years. There was no doubt. Back then, when we talked about great heavyweights, the first two names that came to mind were Ali and Mike Tyson. Right? Mike Tyson was destined to dominate for years. And let's just say Mike Tyson came out flat in some fights emotionally before the bell even sounded. Right? Tyson, who was a terror in other fights. You want to see Mike Tyson look dominant? Look at Mike Tyson against Trevor Burbeck. Dominant puncher. Ready to destroy. Right? Then Mike Tyson in later fights was just hanging out, was just trying to get by. If Tyson Fury shows up flat, the gamblers are out of luck. That's the risk with Tyson Fury. My point is simply this. I think Tyson Fury is skilled enough to be champion. Right? But if you're a gambler, you have to realize that you're not dealing with a guy who, had his head, who has his head screwed on like David Hay. You know, in every fight, David Hay is going to be David Hay, right? David Hay is a guy who seems to have it in perspective. In fact, I don't believe personally that it's life or death for David Hay in the ring, just like I don't believe that it was life or death for Muhammad Ali. I think they're the same kind of personality type. They enjoy the show. They know they're excellent fighters. But they also have other parts of their lives that enrich them, that keep them going, right? With Tyson Fury, with Mike Tyson back in the day, Tyson now seems to have acclimated to being an adult. But understand, the Mike Tyson you see today is not Mike Tyson circa 87 and 88, right? 
those guys, ooh, there's increased risk. Just like there was with Oliver McCall. Let me point out that we knew Oliver McCall was a little crazy back then. That was the reputation. But you also knew Oliver McCall was talented. And to the Lennox Lewis fans, let me just say, has Lewis ever looked worse? Right? I understand he looked bad against Haseem Rockman. I believe he went longer against Rockman that first fight than he did the Oliver McCall fight. And when Lewis, you know, gets up off the canvas, Lewis is barely hanging on. Barely hanging on. In that first Oliver McCall fight. But the problem was, of course, Oliver McCall in the second fight cared less about winning than I'm sure his fans did. Right? With Tyson Fury, you need to track the interviews. You need to realize this is a sport where there's a lot of mental health issues. You need to understand this is a sport where even great fighters who retire unbeaten, like Joe Calzaghe, can somehow end up slipping into substance abuse issues and stuff like that, allegedly, right, before making the comeback. Right? This is a sport where, you know, several guys from back in the day, you know, uh, have um, punch drunk syndrome. In fact, they call it punch drunk syndrome because so many boxers have had mental health problems that in fact there's a medical term for it. Well, don't think for a second that there aren't depressed people in boxing or there aren't people having severe mood swings in boxing. When you watch Tyson Fury at a press conference, you need to ask yourself, do you feel like this guy is always in control of the moment and his emotions? Do you feel that at times Tyson Fury is just a bit over the top? That some of his comments seem just a bit manic? When a boxer starts talking about having suicidal thoughts at a time when they're young, they're ranked, they're in the discussion for high-profile fights, they're having high-profile fights, such as this upcoming fight with David Hay, and yet the fighter isn't satisfied. Worse yet, the fighter feels at times like living's not worth it. Are you concerned? So understand, I will talk about who I think is going to win Tyson Fury fights. But as a gambler, you need to be careful, right? I myself am not betting you, my usual amounts, whatever they may be, big or small, on Tyson Fury fights. Because as good as I think he is, like Mike Tyson, another very talented fighter from a different generation, I'm not sure which Tyson Fury is going to show up on fight night, right? There's a little bit of a lack of consistency. Let me also make another point. <clears throat> Look at the first two rounds of Tyson Fury against Steve Cunningham. Now, I'm not here to say Steve Cunningham's the biggest puncher I've seen, especially not at heavyweight, right? Cunningham's really a cruiserweight, moonlighting as a heavyweight. Why? Because that's where the big money is. But there's a difference between a guy coming in with his hands low, trying to bait the other fighter into overexerting themselves, and a guy being self-delusional, coming in with his hands low with some kind of impression that he can't be hit. Right? You need to look at the first two rounds of Tyson Fury <laughs> against Steve Cunningham, and you need to ask yourself, why are Tyson Fury's hands as low as they are? Right? Is Tyson Fury more interested in taunting his opponent or in winning this fight? Also, Steve Cunningham isn't exactly a guy with the slowest hand speed in the world. He has quick hands. Are you really going to come in with your hands dangling around your waist against a heavyweight with cruiserweight quick hand speed? I'll say this. Tyson Fury better not try that tactic against David Hay. I think he wins the Hay fight if he comes in as Tyson Fury. But if he comes in delusional, with his hands down around his waist, completely disrespecting David Hayes' hand speed and power and accuracy, 
it could be a short night. Anyway, pay attention to mental health, pay attention to boxers, pay attention to depression, right? Pay attention to weight gains between fights because sometimes that's how folks self-medicate, right? My point to you is simply there is a bigger mental health risk in my opinion, and I'm not a medical doctor, I'm not a psychiatrist, I'm not a psychologist, but in my opinion, there is a bigger mental health risk with Tyson Fury than there is with other fighters. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.